In this video, I'm going to show you exactly how I use cursor and I'm going to take you from beginner level to pro. You're going to see exactly how I use cursor to build apps. I'm going to show you exactly how the tool works, the feature that you can use if you're building application with it and how powerful it actually is because a lot of people don't really know how to unlock its power and I just assume that all the tools are a lot more powerful than this one. So in this video, you're going to find out exactly how you can use it. A lot of people have been saying that Windsurf is a lot better than Cursor, but that's because they don't really understand all the features that Cursor actually have. So some of the features that people tend to say that Windsurf has that Cursor doesn't is, is a really good context of your code. And actually, in my previous video, I mentioned that I like to use Windsurf a lot better because it has better context about my code, but I forgot to mention that actually it's possible to do that on Cursor, but it's just the workflow is a little bit more different. You need to index your code base manually, and then you also need to use a certain command in order to make sure that it always generates code by making sure to first have context of your code. Obviously, there's pros and cons with that. That means that it's likely to use more token if it's always grabbing more context about your code, if it's not using good caching. And, and with Windsurf, I've been using so many of my, my tokens really, really fast. So maybe that's one of the downside of always having really good context for your code if it's not using good caching. And I'm not sure how they do caching in that sense, but essentially more context mean more token. So this is one thing that to, to keep in mind. First of all, what is Cursor? Uh, Cursor is this IDE that is built as a fork of VS Code. You can get it if you head over to cursor.com and then you can just download the, the, the file by just clicking download over here. They currently only have a version for Mac. So if you don't have a Mac, I'm not sure how you're going to install it, but if you have a Mac, then you can just head over to their site and download it. So Cursor has two different main features that are called Chat and Composer. So this is a chat over here. It's just like a, a straightforward chat where you can just ask questions about your code. So whenever you want to interview your code and chat about your code, this is when you use the chat. You use the composer when you actually want to write code. And this is when you will head over here to the composer if you wanted to type some code. So you can notice that if you don't see the side panel over here, you can just toggle it by clicking at the toggle AI pen over here and you'll see your chat window right away. So I'm going to start a new composer session and show you an example of how you can use it. If I wanted to chat with my code, I can ask questions, for example, like what is the not found uh, function doing and it will just analyze the file that it has in context which is the file that is currently open right now and respond about uh, what I just asked and if I wanted to be more specific and add additional context you'll notice over here that we have different files this is where you actually add context in in cursor so if I were to remove that you'll see that it says add context you can click add context and you can search for a file by name or and you just start typing for they say if, if i wanted to include the not found file but also the error file i could just add all those files by clicking at the suggestion or just find, look for the file myself over here now in the composer is is technically the same thing you can mention file as well by using context and add the file over here and then call them and so on and so on you notice at the bottom that you can choose your model um, unlike windsurf Cursor allow you to have a lot more model options that you can add. And you can actually add your custom key if you head over to the settings. You can access the settings by heading over to Cursor, settings, Cursor, settings over here. And if you scroll down, you'll see uh, that you have different options. Uh, you have privacy mode if you don't want to share uh, your the code that you're sharing with, with uh, Cursor. You can also uh, use the include Cursor rules file that allow you to set up rules. You have rules for AI if you wanted to run a certain command every time it's running some codes. You can also head over to model where you can toggle model on and off that you want to use. And you can actually add additional model over here. If you look over here, you can also use your Entropic API key, Google API key, and so on and so on. So all the different models that you're interested to use, you can just add them right away from here. Then you have features where you can toggle on and off different features that Cursor offers. So those are like some of the features that you can see when you are in the IDE and when you're like typing, like getting suggestion or prediction of what you want to type. So for example, if you're typing a method and it's guessing the, the method that you're trying to implement, it's going to provide you some, some suggestion. 
So if you head over to beta, you'll be able to turn on the notepad and turn on the bug finder. This is what you're seeing over here. This is a brand new feature. I haven't used it uh, intensely so far, but essentially it will allow you to have cursor and uh, some code in order to verify that your feature is working properly. This is like very, very new. Be careful because it's actually experimental and it might use more token than it looks like. All right, so now you, that you know the difference between chat and composer, let's go to our next point, embedding search. So embedding search is when you are typing inside of the chat. For example, I wanted to ask a question about the cursor about what is this app doing? And if I wanted to do embedding search, I would do command and I would do uh, command enter like this. And what it'll do here, as you can see, is getting a full context of my code. This is how you're using the full context feature in cursor. As you can see, if you look over here, this is actually the command that I was typing. So, so command enter, and then it will look at the entire code base when looking at the code. This is how you use embedding search. And you might notice that it's present over here on the chat, but it's not present over here in the composer. And I believe that that's just because the composer kind of does that by default. So sometimes I've asked the composer to build something for me, and I've noticed that it will just look around in my code and sometimes add the files in the right place. One thing that is different here is that there's a place where you have normal and you have agents, and you can toggle between normal and agents. And you might wonder what's the difference between that. Well, normal follow pretty much a very straightforward path of what you expect it to do, but Asian actually takes some deliberate actions and kind of start doing things on its own if he wants to. For example, if you're trying to debug a bug and you want the help of like a, a co-developer, you might want to switch to agents and ask it to investigate this issue because now it's going to be more proactive about figuring out, figuring out the solution rather than just waiting for your instruction in order to resolve the issue. There's a different way to use context in cursor. You can use the add symbol when you want to mention uh, a context of different documents, or you can use the, the pan symbol. So, so if you type add like this, you notice that there's different type of context. You have files, folder, code, docs, git, notepad, code base, lint error, and web. And each of them have different functionality. Here, if you click on git, you'll be able to share some specific commit. This is a feature that I haven't seen on Windsurf. On Windsurf, usually when I do that, I have to do a git show command and, and paste it into my, my chat. But over here, you can just like literally mention the commit and it will have context of that commit. You can also uh, mention uh, your notepad. So the way you access this has changed. Now you have to do command shift P, type notepad, and you'll be able to access it right here. In the past, it used to be a pop-up where you had your notepad and your composer, but I think that they've changed the view a little bit because uh, the layout just look a little bit different. There might have been some recent changes into the, um, the, the application. So now you might wonder how do you use notepad? So notepad is a great place if you want to mention a different set of files that you wanted to be aware of, or even mention, for example, um, copy and paste some structure that you wanted to flow some of your notes, some additional information that you want to be able to refer to really easily as you type in your prompt. Because if you have a notepad right here that gives a certain set of instruction, you can then just reference it over here by just typing notepad and mentioning the notepad that you've created. You can change the name over here. So for example, if that was my instruction file, I would call that instruction and I would mention it instruction over here. Uh, my notepad instruction, like that. This one, yeah. So this is something that I haven't seen on Windserve. On Windserve, usually when I do that, I actually have a directory in my in my application uh, that is called instruction, where I put all my instruction over here. But in cursor, you can actually copy that and then you could have it directly in your instruction file right here. And I could just refer to into my, my chat and then I'll, I'll get context of that file right away. So really cool feature that cursor has that I haven't seen elsewhere. And then there's also code base. So this is if you want to include specific part of your code base or your entire code base, you can just literally have the code base mentioned and, it, and then you can specify what file you want to exclude, for example, JS or Python or whatever. And it has full context of your code base. Uh, web, super helpful. This is if you want it to search the web for a specific thing. So you can just do at web and say, for example, uh, check OpenAI structure format. And let it search the web, as you can see, and it's searching the web for based on the query that you ask, and it's going to come back with the answer. So 
So think about it as a chat GPT search, essentially. It's just going uh, outside of the context and searching the web for, for some answer and then bring it back. So we cover web, we cover docs, we cover Git, we haven't covered chat. So chat was a way for you to refer to the current conversation. I believe this is not a feature that is available anymore because I wasn't able to actually call this. So we're just going to skip this one. So counter command L is essentially just a shortcut to call the chat. So if it was closed, you were inside of your code, you will do command L to have the pop-up appear. The alternative command that you can do is command I. Uh, as you can see, it switched directly to the composer. So command L is the chat and command I is the composer. And then you have command K, which is uh, something that you can use inside of the terminal. If you weren't sure how to do a specific command into the terminal, for example, how do I look for a specific file? Then it will give you the command that you can run in the terminal. So everyone can become a terminal expert just with this command. Super, super helpful. Cursor rule. So to set up your cursor rule, you have to head over to cursor settings and uh, let's see this and head over to rule for AI and you can enter some of your rules over here or you can just include a cursor uh, rule file inside of your folder and then you can just head over to cursor rule file and then start typing the rules that you want for your AI editor. If you're wondering what kind of rule you can add, you can always head over to the cursor directory. Uh, this is something you can access at cursor.directory you have access to a large library of different rules that people have created and you can just copy some of the rule for the the app that you're working on if you don't know where to get started so for example you can over, head over to next.js look at the rules that someone has written and sometimes it gives uh, some ideas into how you can write the rules for your own app use so i mentioned in the previous video that when i want to give more context about my code i use this uh, tool called three uh, essentially you can, you can get it on through, but it's actually allowed me to get a full context of my code. So I can do something like this, exclude the node modules, and I can just copy that and then give it to cursor so that it has more context about my tree structure. Then you have the cursor in your, this is when it's doing indexing and you don't want it to include all the files where it can be super helpful. So I'm going to show you quickly, if you head over to cursor settings, you'll notice that there's a way to index. Right here, you have code based indexing. Indexing is how Cursor is able to get familiar with your code and it can index your, your Git graph if you wanted to uh, and then it also can index all your files. And then if your files are not indexed properly, you just have to do resync index and to start it over. And you notice that there's, a, there's an in your files. So similar to Git in your, it will essentially in your files from the, the indexing. And when you are using the code base command, so if you're over here and you're doing code base, then you, won't, you will not include those files inside of it. These options over here are another way to do that, but the cursor in your allow you to be a little bit more specific. So if you want to be specific, use that. Cursor also has additional feature that a lot of people are not aware of. You can actually head over to this tab right here and have it generate a, cur a, a commit for you just by hitting this button right here. It's going to analyze your code changes and suggest a commit that you can add inside of your code. Uh, if you're using that. So super, super handy. Another tool that I've been using is this thing called AI commit, AI commit, and it has context of my code and it will sometimes suggest a commit that I need or not. This is another tool you can use, but cursor has it, you know, integrated into their ID, super helpful and easy to use. And finally, if you're wondering what, I, what kind of new feature cursor has that you haven't seen, I highly recommend to follow their change log. You can find the changelog at cursor.com slash changelog. And this is where you'll find whenever they're adding new features that you're not really familiar with, you'll be able to actually see that over here. So for example, docs, git, web, and folder are now available to agents, all the capability that they've given to the agents. Agent is a very new feature. So I highly recommend to, to keep looking at this if you're wondering like what are the new capabilities that they're adding to it. As you can see, Cursor is very, very powerful. There's a lot of features that you can really use to make this even more helpful and powerful for you. But you need to get familiar with using all of those tools. And once you know how to use those tools, it's actually really efficient for you to actually use it. All right, so this is it. So make sure to hit the like button if you enjoyed this video. 
and make sure to subscribe if you want to see more content like this one i'll see you guys in the next one